from Las Vegas, it's The Q. Covering EMC World 2016. Brought to you by EMC. Now, here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely. Welcome back to theCUBE, live in Las Vegas at EMC World 2016. Always happy when we can sit down, talk to some of the practitioners, uh, understanding new technologies, uh, changing the way their business work. Happy to have on the program for the first time, Vasi Sivasegrin, who is the Corporate Director of IS Infrastructure at Penn Medicine. Uh, yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, so uh, first time at EMC World, uh, yes. first time on theCUBE. Uh, give us a little bit about uh, you know, your role and what, what sure. you do at Penn Medicine. Absolutely, I'm the Corporate Director of IT Infrastructure so I take care of uh, operations, IT operations, uh, as well as engineering, and I manage the architecture group, so uh, essentially setting the uh, infrastructure standard for pretty much all the entities at Penn Medicine. All right, can, can you scope out a little bit for us, you know, how large the organization is, how many locations, sure. and what kind of you know, responsibilities you have? Absolutely, uh, we're about uh, approximately 32,000 employees now as of the last uh, acquisition, so uh, we are five large hospitals, three rehab hospitals, uh, seven regional medical centers, approximately 400 uh, uh, clinical practices, and five uh, major hospitals. Uh, we see, uh, have about 5.2 million patient visits a year, uh, roughly about six billion in revenues and growing. Okay, so uh, of course the, the, the challenge in kind of healthcare is there, there's certain governance and compliance things you have to, yes. but there's vast amounts of you know, things you can do with data. C can you just give us, you know, what, what's the philosophy? How do you guys think of data uh, at, at Penn Medicine? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the you know, a dual edged sword, right? Um, you're at one point uh, collecting a lot of data and struggling to manage it and consolidate it. But on, at the same time, it actually ends up being a benefit for us with some of the work we've been doing. The more d data we collect, uh, the more information we're able to gather, and we're, uh, we have some very uh, good uh, use case scenarios where we're able to use that to actually affect patient care in a very positive way. Yeah, I, I, I would sort of, um what you're, what you're talking about in terms of you know, collecting data, managing data, people might call it big data, uh, data lake. How do you think about that as a problem? It, you know, it, I, I doubt you wake up in the morning and go, I have a big data problem. You think about it as a patient care problem or an insight. But what, yeah. what keeps you up at night? How do you, how do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, so all companies across all industries collect data. Um, I think that's very easy to do. Uh, some have um, gotten good at managing that data and uh, consolidating it and putting it in nice neat piles. But I think there are very few that actually are able to use that data to affect, affect their uh, business operations on a day-to-day -day basis. What keeps me at night is not so much the collection part, but uh, enabling the business so we could actually make use of that data. And we always, uh, uh, as a health system, we treat the most acute cases uh, we're a highest ranked academic medical center in the country, but we're also top 10 health system in the country. And we treat uh, some very, very advanced cases of cancer and some advanced cardiology procedures, organ transplant. So if I could somehow build a solution that could enable our patient care providers to create a solution that will uh, make that patient feel better, you know, that, that's good. And uh, you know, that's, that's what keeps me up at night is thinking about how to build those solutions. Yeah. So obviously, the, you know, you're highly ranked, the doctors you have are world class, they've got an immense amount of knowledge. How do you bring data-centric solutions to help them? Can you, can you give us some examples of, of how you're helping patients, augmenting the doctors? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a very, very talented data analytics team and a very talented data science team. Um, and the, the use case scenarios that these folks are envisioning and some are already in practice, uh, and many, many examples, but some of them uh, are as uh, fundamental, such as per being able to do predictive medicine, uh, which is unheard of or revolutionary even like a few years ago, but it's actually practice, you know, right now. So if you're able to, for example, uh, identify at-risk uh, cardio uh, congestive heart failure patients and determine if a heart transplant is better for them, now we have an opportunity to save that person's life. If we could wean somebody off of ventilators, uh, you know, on average, uh, I heard that hospitals tend to keep patients on ventilators for 2,000 extra hours when they don't need to be on there. Uh, so by weaning the patient off, not only is there a financial cost savings, but the patient care, the patient's experience itself is uh, improved uh, dramatically, right? So using RTLS data, for example, to track clinical um, equipment, such as infusion pumps and 
mobile EKG machines and identifying when we have millions and millions of, uh, of square feet, identifying where these equipment are located, but at the same time where they're needed, where the patients that need them are, then we're able to divert that uh, precious resources to the location where it's actually needed. So these are some of many, many examples that we're looking at, uh, being able to predict um, uh, cardiac failure, and uh, I'm sorry, organ failure, and uh, being able to, um, I'm sorry, I think yeah. you have a question. No, 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 you're, it, it sounds, I mean, you've got a big data challenge, it also sounds like you've got an internet of things, you know, in, inside yes. the hospital, so. Absolutely, I mean, we're definitely creating uh, more data because of the merger and acquisition than I think um, because of the clinical workflows, uh, where each application is cr generating a lot of data, but IOT, I mean, uh, smart devices, everything from uh, biofreezer holding tissue samples uh, that's reporting back temperature fluctuations, uh, to clinical devices, like I mentioned, uh, uh, using RTLS, uh, uh, homing back uh, a beacon saying, here is where I am, come and get me. Uh, there's a lot of being generated, and uh, so this is a never-ending uh, uh, issue, I think, it, data is going to constantly get generated. Yeah, boy, so I mean, yeah, you've, you've got all the sensors coming in, you mentioned that there, there was a recent merger uh, that you've done, you know, what does that do to kind of the infrastructure that you have? What do you look for uh, yeah. in kind of the infrastructure underneath that? Yeah, absolutely. Just to step back a bit, uh, unlike other industries, healthcare IT uh, tends to have uh, very, uh, to be very low in terms of percentage compared to operating revenue, right? Um, uh, operating margin and, uh, and revenue. So uh, what that means is we don't get a lot of do-overs. Uh, uh, so when we scale up and when we grow so much, uh, we have to pick solutions that are that doesn't necessarily require a whole um, platform shift or platform change or migration. So we had to pick solutions that are highly scalable. Um, and this, uh, some of the concepts we're learning here in terms of uh, making sure they're cloud first uh, and being able to take advantage of resources, highly scalable resources in the cloud, that's essentially the way I think we'll go as well. Uh, because building on on prem and building uh, when you build to a certain uh, definition, by the time you're done with an M and A, it's already out of scope and out of scale, and then you had to re you know, do that all over again, which is not a luxury we have in terms of uh, you know financial resources, but also time as well, because we were so focused on taking care of the patient care mission that this is the last thing we want to do is to worry about the bits and the bytes, you know. Yeah, right. So uh, scale gets thrown a lot, around a lot. Do you have any metrics you can tell us kind of where you are today and what kind of growth you're seeing? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, if I were to uh, consolidate all the clinical data, uh, clinical and administrative data, I would say it's probably in the range of four to five terabytes, uh, I'm sorry, petabytes, especially with some of the gene sequencing data that we have. But I could easily see that growing to you know, 30, 40, 50 petabytes in a matter of four or five years. Uh, data generation just skyrocketed, and uh, that's what I mean. We don't have the luxury of putting in a footprint and assuming that's, you know, that's what it's going to be four or five years from now. Yeah, you, you talked about you've got an outstanding data analytics team. Can you, can you talk broader about what your team looks like in, in terms of skills, but also you know, what do you look for, you know, the, the vendors and, and partners here to, to help augment technology-wise to help you be successful? So uh, the data scientists are probably the smartest folks uh, in the organization, a lot of uh, MD, uh, PhDs, a lot of uh, PhDs in statistics. Um, these are folks uh, are, that are very, very good at taking information, uh, large amounts of raw, complex information and being able to see patterns. Uh, so they're not necessarily trained to figure out what the best uh, uh, infrastructure solution is, for example. They're basically saying, we just want you guys to provide us this, we really don't care what the solution is behind that. It just needs to be scalable because we're going to be diverting a lot of data towards that. Uh, towards that infrastructure. Yeah, how would you characterize the relationship kind of between the business side of the house and IT? I think it's very, very good. So it's very common, uh, I mean, I used to work in financial services where IT was sort of viewed as a cost center, right? Uh, you're there to support the mission, but you're not necessarily part of the value chain. Uh, whereas uh, Penn Medicine, especially, IT's uh, at the table, which is a very unique relationship, and we're looked on as a valuable member of that, uh, that, that, that value chain. Um, you know, we all, I always tell my team is that, you know, yes, we do IT, but our primary job is to support the patient care mission, uh, and by sort of changing that paradigm, changing that uh, framework and way of thinking, we're able to now contribute to the patient care mission, uh, rather than just talking about I'm going to stand up the next storage array, um, which is what the discussion was about 10 years ago. Right. Uh, 
healthcare is obviously a unique industry. You've got your regulations like HIPAA and yeah. privacy. And how do you how do you sort of manage? How do you think about it and manage? You know, the the value that comes out of data when it's all collected together, but also maintaining privacy and compliance. Um, it's a delicate balance, right? So, uh, you know, one hand you want to enable the business, and the other hand you have to worry about how much to hold back and how much to lock down and secure. Um, so it is a delicate balance. I, I don't think uh, there's an ideal answer. It's really, uh, it really depends on the industry and depends on the, the customer themselves or the organization themselves. Uh, for us, I think we've kind of struck a very good balance where uh, our providers are able to tell us what they need and how much access they need uh, and with good governance, uh, with good uh, administrative procedures, with good process. Uh, and uh, good guidance, I think we're able to strike that balance between providing the providers enough access and in, uh, enough information to uh, essentially take care of their primary mission, which is to take care of the patient, while trying to lock things down and making sure PHI does remain uh, secure. So, can you, can you give us some uh, examples of what really the clinical value is of the data lake uh, that you've built there? Sure. You know, what, what, what can you do that you couldn't do before? Yeah, absolutely. So I know the, the hot term that gets thrown around is real-time data. I mean, um, in my mind, real-time is a fallacy. Um, there's always going to be a delay between the time a provider notices something and by the time they actually enter it in the patient's note. Um, and there's also a delay between uh, communication between the clinical systems as well. Um, but uh, the, the value, at least which I think you asked, is really to provide them data as close to real time as possible where they could actually see trends. Uh, is it an you know, uh, issue with patient progression? Why are there delays in radiology, for example? Is there something wrong with the whole uh, patient care workflow that needs to be addressed? And providing valuable near real time information to the key decision makers. That's that's the key. That's the that's what we're trying to accomplish and trying to uh, fine tune that as much as possible. Yeah. Is, is there anything that you're asking of kind of the technology community that they're not meeting today? What do you see as the white space out there? So, uh, if you're referring to the vendor space itself, I think uh, the vendor uh, market uh, is good. Um, we have uh, you know we always tend to take the approach of is it good enough? I think it's good enough for now. But what's good enough for now is not necessarily good enough 18 months from now um, as the industry changes and as the organization grows. But I feel like there are good solutions, uh, good architectures coming in uh, play. Um, just like uh, Hadoop has sort of changed the way we look at uh, cold storage, uh, I think uh, there'll be new uh, reference architectures such as that that will help us uh, grow as the industry changes as well. Great, so what, what messages would you have for your peers? What do you see kind of the advances in medicine with technology in the future? Um, I think it is, even though healthcare tends to be a laggard uh, when it comes to technology adoption, I think the, the whole uh, speed of adoption is changing, especially in healthcare. Um, my advice or my counsel, uh, if, uh, if I could offer that, would be uh, don't be reactive because things are changing. Uh, it's time to look at the business and see how your team, regardless of, uh, you know, which, what field you're in or what role you play within the organization to see how you could impact the patient care mission. Uh, our CEO always says for every patient that walks in, there's 100 people within the organization that touches that patient's experience. And uh, in my mind, I, I think IT in healthcare, uh, IT folks have a big role to play in that. Um, so that's my counsel would be to figure out how you could be that one of those 100 that could impact that patient care mission. All right, yeah. well, Bessie, Sivis Hagrin, really appreciate you joining with us. Thank uh, you. Lots of in interesting and innovative things going on in the medical world, of course. Yeah. We'll be back with lots more coverage here from EMC World 2016. Thanks for watching theCUBE. It's always